counting, fancy counting. And usually it's going to be like really simple addition or subtraction. So there's really no excuse for getting this math wrong. I will test kind of the, the basic ideas of, of atomic structure. The nucleus has nucleons in it, uh, protons, neutrons, and then surrounding the nucleus, there are electrons. Uh, you have to know what isotopes are, et cetera. Uh, the big thing I want to cover in lecture a lot is just how to do the counting, how to do the calculating of charge and subatomic particles, um, and how to use the periodic table. These are skills. I like covering skills more than I like covering information, especially when it's right in a book or all over the place on the internet. There are combinations, like certain numbers of protons that are stable together. Those are elements. Um, sometimes we use the word element to mean a molecule having just one kind of element in it. Like if I say elemental hydrogen, I might mean H2. This is nomenclature and definitions. Um, we'll see the periodic table in a second, but they have symbols, and sometimes the symbols resemble the name of the element. Sometimes they don't. Things you're supposed to know for the symbols. I don't really like making people memorize things, especially when the periodic table and like tables like this are readily available. So I'll try to have this for you, but. I think it, it does benefit you to know that um, when somebody says potassium, it's K, and that you don't have to look it up, that the symbol is K. Okay, enough babbling. This is, this is really the essence of, of what I'm going to be talking about and calculating with. So atoms are made of, or consist of, these three subatomic particles, proton, neutron, electron. A proton has a mass of about one atomic mass unit. A neutron has a mass of about one atomic mass unit. An electron has a very tiny mass, so we can basically say it has no mass. When we're calculating stuff, we can just kind of ignore the mass of the electrons. A photon has no mass. A photon's like a light particle or electromagnetic radiation. These are all synonyms. Um, photons don't have a charge. Neutrons don't have a charge. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. The electron is found around the nucleus, kind of orbiting the nucleus, if you will. Photons are all over the place, through space, from that light to my eyes. So we can do the totaling of charge just like you add positive and negative numbers together. If I have 10 protons and 9 electrons, there's going to be a plus 1 charge because plus 10 minus 9 equals plus 1. Uh, Z is used as a symbol for the atomic number. Um, in these notes, that'll probably help. If, uh, it's not really been that valuable to me in life to know that. <laughs> atomic mass, that's what I'm talking about when I say like uranium-238. I specified that the isotope that we're talking about has an atomic mass of 238 atomic mass units. And it's just the sum of the protons and the neutrons, and I just already covered that. Um, you'll see symbols like this. We're going to do a few of them together. Um, so A is the atomic mass. It's the number of protons and the neutrons. It's like on the upper left. And what you'll notice is that this is always going to be bigger or equal to Z, because it's the number of particles in the nucleus, and that's at least the number of protons. And if it has neutrons, then it's going to be more than that. Does that make sense? OK. Um, X is going to be the symbol for the element that's dictated by the number of protons, right? So Z and X are kind of like redundant information. If I gave you Z, you'd know X. If I said, hey, Z equals 2, you'd know that this symbol, the X thing, should be helium, H-E. You can look this up on the periodic table. You just look up the number for the atomic number, and that's the symbol. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. The charge is the overall charge for the ion. If there's no charge given, that means it's neutral. That means the number of protons equals the number of electrons. OK, here's an example. This is a fluoride ion. We add the suffix "-ide", to a negatively charged anion that's simple like this. Um, so I'll call it fluoride, but 
you know it as a fluorine anion. Um, so Z is nine. There are nine protons in the nucleus. A is 19. There are 19 minus nine, so that's 10 neutrons in the nucleus. This thing is kind of heavy, right? I mean, it has nine protons. You know that each of those protons has an atomic mass unit of one. So there's nine of them, so that means you have nine of the mass accounted for. Where is that extra 10 coming from? It's got to be neutrons. Total charge is negative one. That means there's an extra electron because the electrons are negatively charged. So that means the number of electrons has to exceed the number of protons, which is nine, by one. So that has to be 10 electrons. 10 electrons, nine protons. Overall charge is going to be negative one. There's one more electron, and there are protons. OK, how about this one? This is oxide. Z is eight. There are eight protons in the nucleus. How many neutrons do you think there will be? Right, there's going to be eight neutrons because I need to figure out where this extra mass comes from. It's, it's 16 mass units and atomic mass units, and there's only eight protons. So it's got to be eight neutrons in the nucleus. Total charge is negative two. That means there's two more electrons and protons. So the number of electrons is 10. OK, here's a cation. It's a positively charged ion, um, boron. Yeah. So the number of protons in the nucleus is five. There are six neutrons in the nucleus. So if we started with five protons, and then it has a negative three charge, that means there's three more protons than electrons. So that means that we only have two electrons. So two electrons, five protons, that means that we have an overall positive charge of three. The protons are more of them by three. Okay, this is a modern periodic table. It looks like a board game because it kind of is. Um, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between those numbers on top, those nice whole numbers uh, to the symbol. So like hydrogen over there on the upper left, it has one proton. Helium, upper right, has two protons. Um, let's look at what you'll see in a periodic table with a little bit more information in it. The atomic number is the number of protons. Right? That's the nice round number on top. Notice, like, if for some reason it's in the wrong place or you don't know which number's which, go from, like, left to right and see which number is increasing by one every, every time you go from one element to the other. That's the atomic number, right? That's where in the, whatever the format is for the periodic table. So remember how I said that the number of protons defines the element, right? So we know that it has to be either C or E. And then when, I, when they say isotopes, they really mean different isotopes of a given. What makes two isotopes different is the number of new, neutrons. Same protons, because they're the same element, different number of neutrons. Make sense? Yeah? All right, everybody agrees. Oh, oh wait, whoa, whoa. Electrons, C. Right, that says electrons, right? Ions differ in the number of electrons, not isotopes. Vocabulary, yeah, vocabulary. So ions are different numbers of electrons. Like if the number of electrons don't equal the number of protons, you'd call the atom an ion. Um, so for isotopes, you're not even worried about counting electrons. You're counting neutrons. For elements, you're counting protons. Try not to speak. OK, so the answer is going to be E, right? Different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus make different isotopes. OK, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an oxygen-18 atom? Z equals 8. That's our symbol for the atomic number. So how many protons would they have? 8, right? So we have, so far, that, that component, everybody's getting that. Protons, there's eight of them. Yes. How many neutrons would there be if the total atomic mass number for that nucleus is 18? 10, yeah. Well, we, got, we got some people are saying E. Very good. OK. And then how many electrons? Well, since we called it an atom and not an ion, that means the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So that means that 
uh, we're going to have eight, eight electrons. When someone says an atom and they don't specify a charge, it implies that there's no charge. So that means the number of protons and number of electrons are equal. So if the atomic number is eight, that means the number of protons are eight. And that means that the number of electrons must also be eight to balance out those protons. So D is the correct answer. Atomic weight, as I said before, is how you add up the weights of the different isotopes and their different abundances. And that tells you how much like the average amount of, or the average weight of a hydrogen on Earth. And this slide, I'm not going to require that you know about what the standard is for how atomic mass is calculated. Um, you saw that from left to right, atomic number increases by one from element to element. And what's interesting about it is that the vertical columns of the periodic table tell you a lot about the reactivity of the elements. So the position of the elements can tell you a lot about what's going to happen to them in a reaction or how they're going to exist in a molecule. So nonmetals, which are on the right, they're shown in white on this graph, and also hydrogen, it, it does react sometimes as though it's a nonmetal, sometimes as a metal. Um, these elements tend to gain electrons. The metals tend to lose electrons. Remember how I said, this is actually annoying, this, this is the uh, noble gases? they really don't do much reactivity. They're like considered to be uh, inert for the most part. So uh, the way I learned it was they're called noble gases because they're too good to interact with uh, other things. So they don't react very much. Uh, very rare that they react. Um, so what ends up happening, I said this was kind of like a board game. Uh, elements will tend to react to gain the nearest noble gas configuration of electrons. And all that means is that like if an uh, element is like here and it's like fluorine. So fluorine is like right next to neon. Neon has eight valence electrons. It has a noble gas configuration. It is a noble gas. When fluorine reacts, it tends to beg, borrow, steal one electron so that it has the electronic configuration of neon. So things kind of move or react to get that number of electrons. Sodium has one electron more than neon, right? You see that? Like neutral neon will have 10 electrons because it has 10 protons. Neutral sodium will have 11 electrons because it has 11 protons. In, on Earth, for the most part, sodium will react to give away one electron so that it has a electronic configuration of neon. So the bottom line is that for elements that are really close to those um, noble gases, you can figure out what kind of charge they're going to have based on how many electrons they either steal or give up. So for example, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, uh, um, <laughs> um, that group will tend to gain one electron so they'll end up having a negative one charge in most ionic um, molecules. Sodium, potassium, um, cesium, francium, rubidium, I think, lithium, will lose an electron to gain a noble gas configuration. Hydrogen will usually actually pick up an extra electron somehow. Um, not as an ionic thing, but we'll, we'll talk about covalent bonding in a bit, where there's not so much stealing, but sharing of electrons. So if you had a molecule like lithium fluoride, or if someone wrote down LIF and said, hey, this is a molecule, tell me about it, you'd be like, wow, well, lithium, it's got one more electron than helium, so it must have given one up to have a stable configuration. And fluorine has one less than neon, so hey, maybe it picks one up to have a stable configuration. So you'd say, yeah, lithium fluoride, that looks like it's going to be an ionic compound. The lithium's going to have a plus one charge on it. The fluorine's going to have a minus one charge on it. Just by reading this chart, 